If you've ever built or upgraded a computer with liquid cooling, you'll know how effective it can be to put your CPU underwater. I mean, not literally, but under a water block that has liquid circulating through it. But could actually submerging computers in the world's largest reservoir, the freaking ocean, be the way of the future? Well, Microsoft seems to think so, and they're already operating underwater server farms with other large cloud providers likely to follow suit. But why are they bothering with something that sounds like it's straight out of Futurama? And how does that even work? Well, it might be fairly easy and cheap to cool your home PC adequately. A $20 air cooler and a couple of case fans is probably gonna get the job done just fine. But when we're talking about cooling off a massive data center housing thousands of servers, we're talking millions of watts, cooling costs start to add up very quickly. In fact, it's estimated that data firms spend around a billion and a half dollars every year in electricity costs just to keep their server farms cool. So at these scales, efficiency really starts to matter. And yeah, you could always strap thousands of water coolers to these servers and call it a day, but you would still have to get rid of the hot air coming off the radiators. So it turns out it's more efficient to just take the entire data center and drop it in the sea. You see, water has a high heat capacity, meaning it can store lots of heat energy without changing its own temperature very much. Think about how a puddle next to the swimming pool can stay relatively cool compared to the scorching hot concrete right next to it. So an underwater data center housed in a watertight pod only needs a relatively simple heat exchanger to dump its waste heat into the surrounding seawater. This saves an enormous amount of energy compared to forcing hot air out of data centers on land, especially when you consider just how much ocean water there is to absorb the heat. Also helping matters is the fact that the ocean is quite cold once you go deep enough. So you'd only have to submerge a server pod in one or 200 meters of seawater to get excellent cooling, even in warm tropical regions. And better cooling isn't even the only benefit to ocean-based server farms. Land-based data centers often have to be located in sparsely populated areas due to their physical size and lower costs for the land and the energy. Although this can save money, it also means that the data has to travel further to get to you, meaning more latency and lower speeds. Underwater server pods, by contrast, can be placed close to coastal areas where far more people live. In fact, 40% of the global population resides within 100 kilometers of a coastline, meaning that a coastal server pod could make your internet experience feel a bit snappier. And speaking of snappier, it should actually be faster to build a bunch of server pods and then dunk them in the ocean compared to building new land-based data centers every time a company needs to increase capacity. I mean, sure, it comes with some engineering challenges for sure, but not only does constructing a big server warehouse require a lot of land, you also have to consider local conditions such as topography, the workforce, and government restrictions anywhere you want to build one. Underwater server farms, though, could be built in assembly line fashion, almost identically, and then quickly shipped to any place that needs them. And they could even be moved around if necessary. They would just need to be connected to data lines and a power source. So one Microsoft pod that's currently off the Scottish coast draws power from a nearby wind farm on the Orkney Islands. In fact, offshore wind installations may prove to be a popular solution for powering these pods in the not so distant future. Now, of course, sticking a bunch of servers underwater presents some real challenges. You can't exactly just send a team of divers out every time a hard drive fails. So the pods need to be designed with redundancies and better remote access to allow landlubber technicians to handle problems more effectively. And, I mean, here's another fun one. Engineers have even had to work on devising special coatings for the outside of these pods to repel barnacles. So it turns out that barnacles can interfere with heat transfer. Though, I mean, I guess they could just do what old school seafarers did and send an intern down to scrape them off, right? Probably not. But you know what is right? 
Private Internet Access VPN. Not only does PIA work on up to five devices at once, hiding your true IP address and allowing you to bypass geo restrictions and censorship, making it appear as though you're connected from somewhere else, it also blocks unwanted connections to help prevent attacks, auto blocks all traffic if the VPN disconnects, and it even includes MACE, PIA's built in malware blocker. PIA supports multiple VPN protocols and encryption levels. They have apps for Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, Linux, and a Chrome extension with support for more platforms coming soon. And they have over 3,000 servers in 28 countries. Also, they don't log user activity. With all those benefits, what are you waiting for? Check them out today at the link below. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, check out our other videos. And don't forget to leave a comment if you have a suggestion for a future fast as possible. That's, it's down there. And also subscribe, that's down there too. So you gotta go like looking for it. It's like, a, it's like submersion searching for subscription buttons. It's underwater, but that was not my finest work.